Hi, my name is John Kim, and I'm a therapist who went through his own rebirth. I share my feelings and revelations. I believe in casual or clinical and with you instead of at you. I come unrehearsed on purpose because self-help doesn't have to be so complicated. One of the things that has been really difficult in my life, besides staying away from sugar, is reading intuition, my own intuition. And I think I struggle with that because I've, uh, like many people, have been pulling from logic so much. Um, logic, ego, uh, you know, approval seeking, things outside of self. And I think when you do that for so long, you have a very dull radar. Uh, you don't know uh, what feels right because you don't drop into your body. And so for most of my life, I've been very heady, right? So um, recently, and by recently, I mean like 10 years ago, <laughs> I started to get very curious about uh, this word intuition. What is your intuition? How do you know that it is your truth? How do you read your intuition? Um, how do you listen to it? You know, and then most importantly, how do you trust it, right? How do you actually know that what you're deciding based on your intuition because the thing about intuition i mean unless you're just you've you've just always been super intuitive and you know what feels right and what 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 doesn't and i believe there's a lot of people like that out there and i'm very envious of those people um i've met many um unless you're you have that kind of uh strength and and gift and clarity uh, it's really hard to trust your intuition because it's you don't know, right? There's no certainty. There's a, just a giant kind of like, what if? And you could be wrong, right? And especially if you're making big decisions. Uh, and, and usually that's where people say you, you should trust your intuition. Um, you're making decisions that can change your life, you know? And so to trust a feeling instead of, you know, something that's on paper or a fact is really difficult, especially if you've been practicing and programmed to, tr uh, to uh, I was going to say, to trace logic. Um, I, I did say tr to trace logic. I was going to say it, and then, and then I thought to myself, that doesn't make sense. And then I announced that I was going to say it, and by doing so, I did. Anyway, okay, so... This idea of sharpening your radar, and what I mean by that is uh, being more, reading your intuition, right? Being more intuitive. So not um, just more intuitive with other people, but your own intuition, you know? So I just woke up from an old self hangover. I called it an old self hangover because um, I, 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 I did some stuff and I felt very gross about it because... Um, it felt like the old John Kim. Now it's not like it's not like I didn't murder anyone or or doing not not that the old John Kim was a murderer, but like I didn't do anything crazy. Um, but I so here here's what happened. I got excited about uh, some new ideas, right? And the thing about me is when I get excited about an idea, I turn into a twelve year old. I mean, I there and and, and there's nothing more. Uh, the birth of an idea is just so – it's like pure dopamine, right? And then everything after that is uh, – can be very difficult, right, the execution. But the birth of an idea is just, you know – and maybe it's just because I'm a writer or because I have a, a huge imagination. You know, I was a kid in fourth grade looking out the window wondering, you know, what it would be like to fly or whatever it is, right? So I never paid attention uh, in classrooms because I was just always imagining things. And so when I come up with an idea – I get so excited about it, I can't sleep. So last night, I didn't sleep because of this idea, uh, which made me really tired. And then I just start, I started messaging people, DMing people, um, asking people about things, and just kind of um, um, not just telling them idea, but also like trying to put, put it together uh, without putting much thought into it. It's, it's almost like this kind of vomiting thing. And um, then I got so exhausted, I... Uh, I had to lay down. Partly it was because I couldn't sleep last night. And then, of course, this morning I woke up at like 5 o'clock. I worked out at 8. And then I just um, – I didn't crash, but I was kind of in this hazy state. And I had to lay down because I was so tired mentally, emotionally. Um, 
and I know this sounds ridiculous, all because of, of, of coming up with this idea. And, and you could say, well, what's the old John Kim? Like, what, what's the, the old John Kim hangover? Why, why do you feel gross? Um, because of the behavior of instead of, you know, just kind of keeping it to myself, like, you know, texting people and, and, and possible, and, you know, other investors and, 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 and trying to put it, kind of put it together, right? We'll be right back after this brief message. It's that time of year where everyone is running around and we are all busy with the holidays, which is great, but it's no excuse to stop feeding your brain. And I don't know about you, but the way I do it is using Audible. It's the biggest and best platform for audiobooks. And although I'm a writer, uh, believe it or not, I rarely read. The way that I digest is listening to audiobooks. I'm going to give you, because of the holidays... 53% off. That's more than half. That is $6.95 a month for three months. Go to audible.com forward slash angry, all caps, A-N-G-R-Y, or, and this is another way to do it, just using your phone, text, all caps, angry, A-N-G-R-Y, to 500-500. For three months of Audible, I just read Ryan Holiday's Stillness is the Key, which is actually a great book for, for the holidays. There are so many amazing books on there. Three months, $6.95. Go right now and use my code, my URL, audible.com slash all caps angry or text all caps angry to 500 500 feed your brain. And that is a knee-jerk reaction. That is very old John Kim. A lot of that comes from desperation. Um, Of course, the excitement of the idea is pure, and that is very solid self. But then what I do with that, right, the behavior that manifests from that should be more thought out, not just like, you know, go crazy, um, chicken with with his head cut off kind of thing. And then when I kind of, when I went, then, you know, when I woke up, I felt gross. And I was thinking to myself, um... Was that intuition or was it me snapping back to my old self? And I'm sharing this with you because I'm using it as an example, right? It's obviously not that big of a deal. It's just me having an idea and kind of going crazy with it. Um, But I want to use that as an example because uh, when you snap back, uh, because maybe – you, like me, have trouble reading intuition. I think what's important is the realization that that's not the new you. You know, like it's important that I, f- I notice that I feel kind of gross because I think that's a sign. And coming back around to this word intuition, maybe that's a part of being intuitive. The feeling that old behavior, if you do it today, makes you feel gross. Because when I think of intuition, I think of like this um, foreshadowing feeling or this like, you know, this, they describe it as like this feeling you have in your gut that, you you know, that, that it's something's wrong or, or something is right. I don't know, you know? Um, But maybe it also kicks in after the fact, right? Maybe it kicks in when you say yes, or if you decide to love someone, or, you know, you get on the plane, or you take the job, or you quit, or whatever it is that you're doing. And then you feel because of the path that 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 decision creates, you start to feel kind of gross, or discomfort, or this is your old self. And maybe that is intuition. It's a intuition insurance. <laughs> it's insu- it's the safety net. It's 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 reminding you that you are uh, snapping back. What's important though uh, is you are not hard on yourself. You know, I talk a lot about your relationship with yourself, and like your relationship with other people, it fluctuates, right? It's not just uh, um, you build a relationship with yourself, and then suddenly it's cruise control, and you love yourself and like yourself forever. It's not that easy. It doesn't work like that. So what's Im- important is that. If you do snap back, if you find yourself um, in behavior that you're not proud of or you wish you didn't do, uh, no matter how big or small, um, 
part of having a healthy relationship with yourself is to be kind to you, you know, understand with, uh, uh, by deploying empathy and know that you've come a long way. And because you snap back, it doesn't mean that you haven't grown. And I think a lot of people, because they're so hard on, hard on themselves that when they do something, um, that, that, you know, makes them feel stupid or they do something that, uh, uh, they've done before that, you know, and then they, they feel like, oh, I, I haven't grown, you know, here, my, here I am still doing that. But that's not true. Uh, you know, just a realization that you are doing something that isn't you.